All good, too easy. Well, uh, welcome to the After Party Podcast powered by AFA. I'm your host, Connor Moroni, and I'm joined by a very uh, special guest, a uh, good old friend, old teammate, now uh, playing for the USA Eagles and also Old Glory Washington, D.C., my good friend, Jamison Schultz. How are we there? Let's go. <laughs> Bro, How you been, there, man? It's been man, good. Been Thanks good, for having me. Good. I'm out of the, I'm, I'm grinding at the moment, pumping out podcasts. Now I just had uh, Scotty CEO uh, from the Wallabies on and then uh, stayed up a bit late for you, my man. Had to uh, get up late to catch you in the uh, AM over there in the States, man. So how's everything been going over there, bro? Bro, it's been good, man. I just enjoying the American life, you know. Like you, when we're kids back home in Oz, you know, you're always watching the NBA games on TV, NFL games. But um, then it's just always cool, you know, you're finally watching them in, in real life, you know, going to games, watching the stadiums, seeing how crazy, you know, the, the fans really are here. You think, you know, a Wallabies game is fun to watch or something like that. And you come, you know, watch a 90,000 person stadium just at a college game, you know, oh, watching right. like, it must like be a, a Clemson game. It's the most insane thing you've ever seen in your life. Like, oh, bro, you'd be loving all like, that. You, you do not realize. And then they got the tailgating parties before the game. That's even even better <laughs> you know to get, get a million people outside outside of the stadium drinking before the before the game and then they oh that's yeah dude that crazy you say that i remember i was talking to um oh, what's his name man uh you know the hectic uh nfl player who was from australia jesse williams the monster yep yeah i was yeah. talking to him and he was saying like that's the craziest thing about it is it's like a hundred thousand like on the inside and then on the outside yeah. there's like another half a million there is just sitting there in their cars. They have like 80 inch like screen TVs outside of their trucks, just sitting there, their own power generators, bringing fridges full of just alcohol, beers. They're cooking up a barbecue feast. And yeah, that's, you know, it's cool just being part of that and just, you know, seeing like the different side of you oh, know, how crazy sports is in a different sure, country. Dude. Because that's the, that's the sickest thing about that is just how big everything is over there, especially the sports. Like they just love it. And man, I guess now that you're, kicking off in the the footy uh, career over there. And I mean, rugby is obviously growing and getting bigger and bigger as the years go on over in the States there. Are you starting to see those sort of crowds merge towards or even becoming more intrigued in uh, rugby a bit more? Yeah, most definitely. I think ever since, you know, um, rugby has become an Olympic sport, um, especially yeah. in America, uh, it's, you know, it's grown rapidly over the, over the few years. You know, especially the women's actually rugby is the fastest growing sport in America. Yeah, so Crazy, that's... Right? Yeah. You know, just to see, you know, the women's side of, of the sport is growing just as much is, is crazy because, you know, you got to have both sides of, you know, of, of the rugby world to, you know, improve rugby even throughout the world. So that's pretty special with, you know, the women's side as well to becoming, you know, a big thing in the world. So, yeah, it's just, it's crazy because, you know, there's, you why know, rugby is what... Why do you think the women uh, are so popular over there? Uh... I think it comes down just to opportunities, you know, like it's typical America, you know, rugby. I don't want to get to like the politics side of it, but yeah, I think rugby just gives another opportunity for, for women just to, you know, showcase their skill and s stuff that they're not getting, you know, seen you know, with other sports. I think yeah, I guess, is, I know, guess for like some of the biggest sports, like football and all that, like women aren't usually playing in that. So it does give them a different avenue to kind of go down, especially if they want contact. Yeah. yeah, especially with how open rugby is, you know, where always welcoming everybody from around the world and all different cultures. And I think that's what, you know, draws people in. It's why, you know, there's a big crowd and following from the, the Americans following rugby because it's just such a, a different, you know, a different sport and different, you know, there's crowds and you know, people that come and watch, you know, it's not just everyone's supporting one team as everyone's there having fun, enjoying each other's company, you know, drinking obviously is a big part of it. Yeah. But, you know, it's, end of the day you don't, you don't get a sport where you can I hear, hear it all the time where you smashing someone on the other team and you get to have a beer with them after the game you know it's oh, a thing man. like that and it's the same thing that goes for the crowds you know you can hate the team but at the end of the day you're there just to have fun and enjoy enjoy the moment you know yeah man for sure and then first moving over there I mean you're originally playing for Houston yeah um yeah yeah I was in Houston 
And bro, I guess you, you've, you've kind of been there since like the sort of the start or the birthing of the MLR. I mean, you might've been a year or two after, I guess, once you, once you yeah, did join I, up. Yeah, I think it was, uh, I was, I had arrived, I think the second year the MLR just, so, so I've, I've pretty much been here, you know, since the beginning and I've seen it grow rapidly and I've seen, you know, we're getting superstar players like Manolo coming in, getting guys from the Northern Hemisphere coming in, you know, we had, um, all these all black players that are coming in, you get Gido and um, Adam actually Cooper coming into LA. So when you're seeing players like that come into a young league like the MLR, that it's it just shows the rapid growth of American rugby. Completely. It, all all it takes is just a major sponsor to, to just throw some extra money into the rugby, and you're going to see it just boom. Kind of, it's going to become a, like, like the new thing. And you know you hear a lot of a lot of the time like. It's the place to come, you know, it's the lifestyle, like the food here, but the lifestyle of, you know, like I said, is going to sporting events, you know, like just the Super Bowl, you know, is one of the greatest sporting events in the world. And, you know, just have that in your backyard is something yeah. cool that teams look, you know, that people will come over here and, you know, people want to go to LA and experience that lifestyle or come to DC, and, you know, look at the and find the culture of American, American history. So it's, you know, yeah, it's something special. It's different to a, it's very very different to going anywhere else in the world because you know it's, it's you know, all that, that's, that's the great thing about it you know it's all yeah, happening it's, it's a yeah. crazy thing it's crazy it's so dope so with the uh, mlr and i guess even usa teams what's the rulings in regards to like is there a percentage of actual american born people that have to be on the teams or is it pretty much a free for all wild west at the moment um so similar to japan you can only have a certain amount of foreign players um on a team but with the rules and regulations with it, some teams can trade away their foreign spots for either draft picks or, or yep. players. So, you know, you're getting a lot of, like LA has been doing that. That's why they were able to have so many foreigners Stark. on their team. But um, a majority, like, the depth is where the Americans come in because, like, you know, you can only have so many foreigners come in and the salary cap's pretty low in, in the MLR at the moment. And I think it's, it's meant to be rising for the next season. So you can only have... You only fill, you know, your maybe top fifteen with foreign spots, or as 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 much as the salary cap can hold, and then the rest will be full filled with, you know, Americans and American qualified players. But it's Definitely. easy for me because I got American passports, so I don't count as a foreign spot. Right. So it's easy for teams, and you know. Yeah, bro, you got that. Ma- you you got to be happy you came out of your dad's ball bag for sure. Uh, <laughs> but the magic ticket, thank you, dad. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, papa. <laughs> <laughs> um. Man, and as well with um with all that there, I mean, uh, with those American boys coming through, I guess we'd probably almost get like it, it wouldn't be there yet, I'm sure, but like you might get into that sweet spot where guys have been playing it for a period of time now, where they are starting to get that natural skill coming through. How far off yeah. do you like? I mean, it's obviously so hard to say. It's a ballpark figure, but like, how far away do you see that becoming like in the states? so much more of a stronger sport. I mean, coming through like high school, college, like all that sort of stuff where they can really ingrain like a good, like momentum and like, cause you know what I mean? Cause like, it's only so new there in the grand scheme of things comparing it to like New Zealand or yeah. Australia where it's been played for the last 80 years. Yeah. Uh, I think with, with how Australia and New Zealand have done it with the, you know, building the grassroots first before they build the professional teams. Um, the U S is, like a majority of the MLR teams now have academy programs yep. where, they're, where they're starting the kids from high school. So that's another pathway for kids, another opportunity if they can't make a football team or NFL team. So now that they're integrating the programs from the rugby teams um, from such a young age, I, I can see it definitely growing. And, you know, DC has an academy program that starts, you know, we even do the youth program starting from like ages eight upwards and it's, it's awesome to see you know just an affiliation with you know a grassroots program with the professional league you know even when we're kids you know when we were growing up doing that reds academy or whatever it is it was always cool yep. you know rocking that red shirt around you know, sure, around, around town or whatever it was giving you that fake so, hope yeah exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> so you know it gives it gives these kids you know they're, they're rocking around like an old glory shirt in dc and everyone's like oh wow what's what like, you know what's this team you know what team's that it's the professional rugby team dc yeah and then, you know it just gives those, those those kids you know another opportunity another chance to showcase their skill onto another sport or you know just and the big one you know with the, with the us is just 
getting them off the streets, you know, just another opportunity just to just to um, help them, you know. Yeah, just, you know, rugby help a lot of people around the world and you know, just, you know, just takes away the matters from around the world and just puts them into a team sport and a team environment where they're just with, with friends and then just enjoying enjoying the moment, enjoying, you know, friendship, enjoying yeah, you know, a new new style of sport. Yeah, definitely, man. And with that as well, I mean, obviously comes just the freak athleticism that is um, that that comes with the USA sports in general. Are you, have you? Who were the blokes that you've kind of met so far, or play with, or people that you sort of recognize? Do you think there's a good ability for guys to really cross over that have been good in other sports? Because I mean, like, there, there's such a big cutoff rate for the NFL, for the NBA, like all these, maybe not NBA so much when it comes to rugby, but NFL especially. Like, there must be so many players that don't end up making that league there. Do you think that people will start to look as rugby as a second option if their first sport doesn't really go through? Yeah, 100%. You're getting actually a lot of, um, like, Div 1 athletes coming into the rugby programs. They're not getting into, like, a full contract, but they're just... You know, been been training with the boys. Yeah, sort of experience. Getting type of player. Like you're getting like guys that are the size of props running like a a four a four four forty, and you're like, what the hell, man? This is freak athlete, like 160 kilo prop oh. running at <laughs> that speed and jumping just as high as like Israel Folau, whatever it is. So it's you know that's that's when you're like, man, if if you just don't know how to pass and catch, then you'd be the next thing, you know. All right, but I guess that's. I guess that's all it comes down to is, you know, that like America has all the ability in the world, but it's just the knowledge now of the, of the game. And once yeah. they learn that knowledge of the game, just understand just the fundamentals, the basics, man, this is it's going to be a, a crazy team in the next few years for sure. Yeah, for sure, man. And we'll get to that. So, like, I mean, the obviously it seems like a real strong thing that has been happening within the USA rugby is the sevens teams. And, I mean, like, they have probably – they were – probably the first thing that America started to excel at, especially in rugby. Um, now, obviously, there's more, much more bigger focus like on the 15s there. That's why they've included the MLR and obviously trying to like build up that rep of the Eagles there. Um, with that there, I mean, it, it has been mixed success. I mean, you guys have had a bunch of games this year. I'm sure it's been good to get some good hit outs um, throughout the season. And, and there has been, even in the losses against some really good teams, there has been some valiant efforts do you think that like you guys are getting to that standard where you need to be yet? Because I mean, there are also games against like Uruguay and whatnot where it could be 50, 50, whether you should be losing or winning those games there. Do you think that yeah. there is like a couple more years until you guys are going to find that fitting or do you think it's capable or are you capable of it now? Man, it's, it's, it's tough to say. Cause with the, with, like, with the team we have, we have enough ability and enough, power and strength and, you know, knowledge of the game to to compete. You know, we played against England earlier in the year and, you know, we were, we only lost by, what, 13 points, I think it was. So, yeah, man. You know, and it was tight was the game as well. That was, yeah, that was a good game. And that just showcased just, you know, like this, obviously the MLR, like a majority of that team was from the MLR and they're American born and bred players. So it just goes to show, like, it, America is rising with the sport. But then... I think it comes down to a big mental capacity, you know, because then we go down to Uruguay just the other week and then we get smashed by them, you know, a Uruguayan team. I'm not saying that they were they were not good because, you know, they, they came out and they wanted it more than us. But yeah, um, so just I, I think it all just comes at the end of the day, like, you know, we're all human. Like there's there's no no one is better than another. Like it yeah, just all comes down to mental and capacity, you know. Yeah, we, we, we all got two arms, you know, we all got two legs and end of the day, it just, you know, who wants it the most? And that's what I think comes down to with, with us. And I think, I think it just comes, like the American style of um, the way they're, I think, the, like the college system they have, you know, they're, if you're a Div 1 athlete playing like Div 1 football, Div 1 basketball or baseball, whatever it is, you're just put on the pedestal your whole life. And then if you don't make that team after that, then you go into a, like a normal life I guess what it is sure. and you so I guess you get that mindset of just always being the, like thinking you're the best your whole life and then once you're nothing then your your mental capacity isn't isn't right there and that's yep. that's what I I find with a lot of the college players that come into the MLR especially is college rugby is is, is not good here it's not like the highest highest standard but they what would you compare it, what would you compare it to Australia wise 
Man, I reckon it's probably Colts. <laughs> Colts, yeah. Like Colts one, yeah, Colts one, yeah. Probably, I, man, I think like something like that, yeah. And they're pretty much, would that be a hundred, like a higher percentage of USA boys rather than internationals in the college system? Oh, uh, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, like maybe you get two or three foreign boys there getting a scholarship for like the academic stuff. But yeah. besides that, it's pretty much all American, yeah. Uh, the go on you were saying about the college system, it's not really... Yeah, like I, a- I think it just, it's it's sort of... It's, it's, I think it is, is 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 bad for some of the athletes that come in because you're you're always being told you're the top dog of all yep. of all this. And then you know you get out of the real world, you get cut by a team, and you just you can't handle it. You can't handle like what do you do next or like who who am I now? Like you sort of lose your like who you are at the end of the day. But you know it's just a sport when we think about it. But yep. I think that's that's the one of the major concerns with you know sports in the US. Like you see it, you know. Like you see just how bad like the suicide rates is in the US. It comes down to all, also that mental the mental side. So yeah. I think end of the day, it just like it is it needs to be a big factor with uh like the mental training and mental skills, like dealing with those types of things. Copying and that's when I think yeah, and that's when I think the American uh, rugby side as well will improve a lot. Yeah. Is just dealing with those or dealing with losses as well. Like, you know. We lose a game it's not the end of the world it's just a loss you know we move on to the next one you know it could yeah, be a big sure. loss but still it's an interesting take man because i think i guess when you think about like america like all their sports the end goal is the nfl or the mlb or the NHL, whatever it is that you want to do and then if you don't really make yeah. that by 22 or whatever then you're usually you usually sporting's do, done like there's not really yeah. a big club system after where you're playing football or a club baseball yeah. team that you're still playing for it's sort of like if you don't make it you're done Whereas all yeah. Australian sports, everything like that, there's always opportunities elsewhere. You're just going to keep going. Yeah, exactly. Do you think, yeah. um, do you think, man, because I mean, like your career, like back in Australia, do you think like that sort of helps as well with your own personal mindset, having struggles of playing like all uh, throughout Queensland? Like, I mean, you're always killing it, but like, I mean, there were points where you were at that club level where you could have got picked up professionally and then you ended up moving over to Japan and whatnot and kind of having like a bit of a pathway before you got to where you are now. Do you think that that helps a lot as well, having that sort of trials and tribulations throughout that and not really getting to the end goal immediately, like maybe some of the American counterparts? Yeah, 100%. I think that's what's what's made me, not saying I'm the best, but not, not saying like my mind is a lot stronger because <laughs> when I was best. younger, you know, <laughs> <laughs> my mind is definitely a, a, lot, a lot stronger because I've, I've been, you know, I, I've been through those ups and downs. You know, I've been cut from teams. I've, been, I've never made a team or been told I'm not good enough and stuff like that. But, you know, I, I think that's kind of a sort of a blessing for me because, you know, you get when you're younger, like you're, you're always like, oh, fuck this coach, fuck that coach. I, I, I'm better than this guy. But yeah. you look at it now, you're like, damn, I'm thankful that happened because now I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm living in D.C., you know, I'm right on Capitol Hill. Yeah, like, you know, my own my, my own house now. So you know, Bro, stuff like that. Um, yeah, so like stuff. Like, you look at it like that back then. You're like, fuck, man. But you know, you sit here now. You know, I'm talking with you, man. You got your own podcast, and I'm sitting here in my backyard, and like, fuck. See, this is it's all worth it. You know, all, all those trials and tribulations, and all those you know those negative negative thoughts you used to have. Now you like, now you're here. Um, internationally capped now. Like that was a dream. Um, you know, one step closer to a World Cup, you know, qualify first and then um, playing, you know, professional rugby in America. You know, I never, no one would have thought that 10 years ago. Like, what? They got an American team over there? Or what? What's going Bro, on? <laughs> it's out of control. It jeez me up. Every yeah. day. Whenever I see it, I'm, I'm popping off. Yeah. And bro, now you're internationally fucking capped, bro, which is outrageous. Talk us through that, making the debut, because I know you for a fact, you G up for a footy game no matter what, even if it is cold <laughs> footy, bro, you're ready to rip someone's head off. Tell me, like, walk me through that sort of like getting the call up and, and making your debut there, especially for the States as well, man, like repping the States always with your dad, like, just talk about how special that was getting the call up and sort of the vibes leading up to it. And once you got there, just playing your first fucking international game, man. Yeah. It, for me, it's still, it's, I guess, it's still surreal, you know, playing uh, in, in internationally kept because you're like, you watch people on TV, and, you know, you're sitting there, you know, we were at a World Cup in what, 2015, the England World Cup, and we were watching games. Like, if we watched the USA game, um, we watched the Wallabies, All Blacks, and all that. And we're sitting there in the crowd having a beer, drinking, like never 
in my life where I thought, hey, I'm, I'll be on that same field at playing at Twickenham Stadium, right. you know, stuff like that. So it's still, for me, it's still, still processing. Like I had my, 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 my debut was back in 2019 against Japan, but I was just like, it was just an average, average game, nothing really special. But, you know, over the years, it's sort of, you get like, oh shit, I just had my first international cap. You don't really, it doesn't really hit you until later for me. I was like, damn, what the hell? Sort of sitting there, like taking a shit and you're just like, oh shit, <laughs> I just got cap. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it's it, it's special because I you know I got my obviously my dad's American and it was special for him and and my grandparents as well you know seeing me on TV and it's a bit of a shame they still haven't seen a professional game of mine yet in 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 person yeah. so that's I mean watching me on TV or on YouTube like for uh, last four years now so had they still haven't seen a live game unfortunately and then so hopefully the next few years they'll be able to watch watch a live game in person or but you know it's always something special just to to see that your you know your family is proud and your parents are proud and then your friends back home are always supporting you and that's always the thing that pushes me when I'm like flat I'm for like training today. It's like man you got a lot of support back home. So just keep doing it for them. Keep doing it for you know back home. Oh man I'm surprised Toddy hasn't got on a fucking plane over there yet. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I'm sure he'd be itching to see you play hey. Yeah, be, um, he would if he would if my mum didn't let him my mum just let him go he would do it but <laughs> she's like, got the grips thing, on yeah, him. you gotta you gotta pay the bills <laughs> well, that's the thing man if he goes over he probably can't come back yeah which he, probably, he, which he'd, he'd love, about that. <laughs> which he'd love yeah. <laughs> man. yeah man i see he's always posting about like american spots like in brizzy like i'm always seeing i'm like looking for like hot know, dogs yeah, and shit in the mic bro hot dog and wing spots man he loves his wings <laughs> oh, no, man, you, you, you can't take the man out of America, eh? Um, no. And, bro, Twickenham must have been a bit of a pinch yourself moment because, yeah, you just said that, man. Like, 2015, we're sitting in the stands off our fucking face and then, like, six man. years later, you're playing on Pretty that sure against England. Then. Yeah. What was that? Pretty sure we were butt-ass naked on that stadium. Like, in our yeah, then we were. We were going ham. <laughs> Man, we had those beer cups stacked. <laughs> oh, bro, oh, and that was like my drinking money as well. I was like, you got one pound for each thing. Everyone thought I was like taking the piss, but bro, I went over on that trip with like four hundred pounds. Oh man, I don't even know how. I, I didn't even play that whole tour. You didn't I was even just play the whole drink. time, bro. You were just on um, drinking tour. But oh, God, man, those drink. times, those times are good. Um, and then, um. I guess let's let's talk about when you were back in Australia. I mean, did you feel a little bit hard done by at all at any times, like not getting any cap spots or any selections like in super teams at the time? Uh, I think back then I did definitely. Yep. You know, I, I I thought I was I, I was good enough to at least be in a in a squad or in, in like a team. But now that I look at it, I'm I sort of thankful because I'm like, if I made a team then, I wouldn't have gone to Japan and I wouldn't have you know played minor ten with New Zealand. And, I, and then I wouldn't be here, you know, I, um, like in in America. So for sure back then, I was like, fuck them. But now I'm like, thank <laughs> yeah. you. So it's sort of like a different mindset now. You yeah. grow older, you know, it's sort of like a fuck you attitude to a, you know, a grateful and thankful for, you know, the opportunity and stuff like that. But I, but, but now, you know, I'm happy, you know, um, America is my country now. And, you know, Australia will always be a home, but this, this, this is my... This is this is my place. Stomping ground for a while. Where I'll be, uh, yeah. Yeah, man. Well, Obviously, all my family and friends are back there, but yeah, this uh, is this is this is where I'll be. Oh man, not long now. Everyone will be able to fly over and go nuts over there as well. Yeah, yeah. Not, not me. Um, but, um, <laughs> um, we won't get into that. Fucking um, but uh, bro. Um, <laughs> uh, what was I gonna fucking say? Um, but we just, yeah, well, bro, I think that's like one of the things with rugby as well that like, it, it's it, it's interesting to say, like as you get older, you start to get over things like a lot more, but like, man, it's one of the worst things of rugby, especially in Australia, like the bitterness people get when they don't get like pizza yeah. and team and all, and then people hold on to that shit for so long. And I'm glad yeah. that like yeah. you realized like a lot of people should, that you just fucking move on and get on with it and opportunities will arise. This uh, episode of the After Party Podcast was brought to you by our proud sponsor, The Lad Collective. So Gemma, uh, my good mates uh, here in Brizzy, two terrorist boys, both brothers, absolute idiots. Um, mate, they've started up a new company and uh, they're trying to get sheets uh, good for blokes again. 
and basically, mate, uh, they reckon that it's just too difficult in the bedroom for blokes to uh, get all their shit sorted and uh, or get their sheets sorted, as they say. Um, so, mate, what they've got is they've got bottom left, bottom right, top left, top right tags on all the corners so you can rip them in. <laughs> They've got magnetic and zip up uh, pillowcases and uh, bed sheets as well, man. So they'll get you sorted. 60% uh, bamboo, 40% cotton. So it breathes easy. Um, mate, yeah, because that's the thing, us heavy set boys, man. We, we need to uh, have that cool night's sleep, bro. <laughs> Especially you don't want that sweat. Um, so, bro, what's your uh, sheet situation like at home now? I know you've got a new miso. Is she taking care of that sitch or is that uh, oh, pretty much you? Yeah, she's definitely got that high class, you know, bamboo sheet, but fuck, I don't make the bed. Let's, I, I let her do that. So, <laughs> bro, here's the thing guess what? You get to be the man now. You get to come home after beating the All Blacks, kick you, let her kick her feet up, mate, and then you can take care of the sheets and it'll be easy as with these bad boys, mate. So, I'll see if they can hook you up and somehow shoot a pair over to Washington for you and then you'll be all sorted. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go, bro. Too easy. Well, uh, yeah, if you want to get, grab a pair of your own, uh, go check them out on www.theladcollective.com.au or uh, check out their Instagram at The Lad Collective. Yeah, exactly. And I, I guess that's, you know, as part of rugby as well, you know, those, yeah, obviously you get cut from teams, you don't make a team, you don't make a squad, but, you know, it's just the opportunity that you get, you're just going to make the most of it. And that's, you know, my... That, that's just how I how I've grown now. My mindset is just the opportunity you get, even if it's a minute, ten minutes, or a full game. You just got to make like play it, play that minute like it's your last last ever minute playing rugby. And I, you know, that's that's just the mindset you got to go into with, with everything. Not not just sports, but you know, just life. Because you know, we're, we're here today, and then, you know, we're gone tomorrow. So that's it. You know, that's that's just the on tomorrow. That's just the thing. You just, you just got to enjoy <laughs> it, man. You just got to enjoy the life, enjoy the moment, enjoy the journey, and that's you know, that's. That's what I've been doing. That's what I've been doing yeah, over these past few years. That's it, man. And do you think, I mean, there must be like a smidge in you, like being from Australia and like playing all the way here. Do you think there is like anything in you that maybe like, I'm not saying like now, but down the track, would that ever be something you would look uh, look to do is come back and look to play for a team back here? Or do you think you, I guess it's so hard to say, I guess time will only tell, but do you think that's something that like you want to check off in the, bucket list books or you're happy with uh, yeah. never really going back no definitely I I just want to get a world cup underneath my belt first before I can come back home that's that's my main goal for the next two years is that 2022 2023 world cup you know in France and that's my plan first and obviously I do want to come back home you know I haven't been home in what three four years now it would be yeah, yeah four years oh, it's been so it's been a long, long bro it's been a long yeah it's been a long time so um, I definitely want to come back, you know, and play Super and represent. You know, obviously, obviously, Brisbane would be my 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 choice of team to play for. But it's definitely definitely been in the back of my mind. Obviously, coming home and still playing there again. But you know, only only time will tell. Only time yeah, will tell. Step by step, it sounds like the go. But um, man, yeah. now, now that you've been over in the states, I mean, we we're talking about it a bit earlier, like crazy lifestyle over there, like so many like different things going on, like different people like it's big and cra everything's crazy man like have you met or run into like anybody at all around the around the times that, like because i mean you'd be running into pro players and stuff all the time i mean has there been anybody cool or anyone like that, that you've run into and been like oh shit like throughout the mix oh yeah 100 like there's there's so where we train where all glory train um it's like a multi-billion dollar complex where you get like kevin durant does his um basketball camps there at the Wizards do their like their personal one-on-one -on -one trainings there yeah it's so like my first I think my first day I was like looking at this guy and I was like Fuck, that guy looks familiar and he was like lifting this there's like I don't know what he was doing like some weird ass bicep curl and I was like Man, that guy's kind of weak as fuck looking at him I was like shit and then I was like oh fuck, that's John Wall it was like John Wall <laughs> I was looking at him like hey what the hell and he was doing oh, like this weird bicep thing and I was like Oh, I was like looking at it like, fuck, you got big ass feet. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, yeah, it's probably why he looks all saggy every time he comes back from fucking off season. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was talking to him. Was, uh, see, that's the crazy thing about NBA. I was talking to him that day. He's like, yeah, man, I just bought uh, my parents a place in in DC. Like, my family's all living here. I can't wait to like, live out my career here. And then two hours later, he got traded. 
I think he got traded to um, I guess Oklahoma. He got traded to. Yeah. Oh, hectic, bro! So literally, you're that talking about. And we just had like a good ten minute conversation about him, like loving DC. This is where his hometown is. I was like, oh, oh what? <laughs> bro, that's insane, dude! I just like, he like, chopped like, like that, dude. Oh, I was like, damn! Like that's that. See, that's that's what I'm. That's the crazy thing about American sports. Like you can just be, like some of the stories you hear. Like they're on a plane and they land. And they got to fly back to their to their city just to move their stuff. So, yeah, man. Oh, that's, bro, that's the crazy. Thing. It's so cutthroat, man. Yeah. And any, anyone else? Or it's pretty much just been those boys around the DC area. Um, it's been Chase Young from the Washington football team. Um, so some of those boys come out to the game, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, that's so sick. Like, it's probably, yeah, as they, things get bigger and bigger, it's just going to be more and more like cross pollination and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And like, yeah, exactly. do, you, do you find like they're sort of starting to like respect it as well and starting to catch knowledge of it a bit more? Oh, it's it, it's never been about the respect thing. They just like they they honest. They're all scared of it. Like it's whenever scared. I talk to them, they're like. They're like, you guys are, you guys are fucking crazy. Like, why the fuck? Where, where's your helmet? They're like, I would never hit someone like that. Well, bro, have you had had... died fucking like that? And I was like, man, yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> bro, have you had a muck around at all at all? Chucking any pads on by any means? Oh, uh, no, I, I need to though. I need to. I just need to go whack someone. Do something. Bro, <laughs> you in pads and a helmet is just. <laughs> designed to murder dude because that's the problem as well eh? they give you like a false sense of how strong you really are and so you're just flying with that's, your head and rattling around yeah yeah i know but it's i think it's the good thing about it. you get a lot of like aussies like making the nfl teams die as kickers some stuff yep. like that like punters kickers and i think they try to they're spreading the word of you know like there's a rugby professional rugby now in the u.s so like they obviously bring out players to the games and even like after um who's that leaky guy signed uh the Jordan Melata signs the Eagles. Oh yeah, yeah, hectic. Like well, he's only been playing three years and he's like the highest paid left tackle in the whole the whole NFL. Bro, that's, yeah, that's crazy. Definitely. Like well man, there's so much stuff that, do that. There's so many things that are like yeah. could be easily be adaptable to over that. Hey, like the main thing I always think is oh yeah, <laughs> these motherfuckers don't know how to tackle dude. They just fucking yeah. fly with yeah, their head and go nuts. You tackle like that in rugby, um, you'd be knocked the fuck out. Oh, you would be knee to the jaw or something like that. Yeah. That's that's the crazy thing, yeah. Oath, man. But, and um, I was going to ask uh, as well with like teams like the Guiltinis this year, obviously that was like, I think it was good for the, the comp especially because it kind of like highlighted it a little bit more. People were excited that there was like an LA team, like all that sort of jazz and having all those star players over there. It's funny though, like I guess from like an outside perspective looking in, you kind of like like them and you get around them and whatnot. Do you find that now that the comp has been going on a little bit more, that there are sort of rivalries starting to build between teams and like, do you kind of look at the, like, all the hooting and hollering from them and sort of go, fuck you guys a little bit? <laughs> See, at first, because the that, that guy, Aussie Oz, guy, Oz, Gilchrist, he owns the Austin and LA team. So when he yeah. came out with those team names, like the Gilgronis and Giltinis, everybody was hating on it. But I was yeah. like, fuck, he's just, he's just building his brand. You know, it's all oh, about right. this at the end of the day. Right. And he's fucking making money from it. So he doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. And then for him to start his LA team and they win the, the competition, you know, that's just, just a big fuck you to everyone that doubted him. So yeah, I thought it was a boss ass move when he, when he did it. So I was, I, I was like, I was happy. He, he, so bring in a team for the first year and win the competition that's been going for what, over four years now, that's not an easy feat. So for him to do that is is, is awesome. It's, it's great for the league because the LA team, uh, they'll bring in like they, 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 DJing like every every week. They're like fat right, man. Was like Steve, I saw like game. Steve Aoki there at one point. Steve Aoki was DJing. Uh, it's on the side, like a halftime show. <laughs> they had Johnny Knoxville commentating the game. He has no idea what the fuck he's talking about, but just oh, having man. him there. <laughs> Bro, yeah, like, it's, it's like so that. sick. They, had, um, they, they know how to sell. Fuck, yeah, they do. And they had like, because now Mark Wahlberg's the co-owner of F45. So yeah, he's, yeah. he's connected with that as well as bringing in so many people to uh, to that LA community. And it's, it's good. I thought it was great for the league. You know, it yeah. definitely build a huge following now not just with like rugby around the world but just normal people that just want another sport to watch so definitely man 
Sure. Yeah. And, and back to that sort of rivalry thing, are there rivalries of building at all? Like, cause I mean, obviously it takes time for that to sort of build, I would imagine, but like, is there anybody that old glory fucking hates? <laughs> oh yeah. Fuck, we hate Atlanta. That, that's, Atlanta. Um, that, that's the number one. Yeah. Hey, Atlanta's been a rivalry that? though. I think it just started as a preseason game, you know, you both have, like, they have a nine that talks shit, and then we have a nine that talks so much shit. So when they both come together and they talk shit, then it's just a huge fight. So And do I, they ever fight, or is it everyone else? <laughs> yeah, it's always them fighting, causing a fight, and then them going to the back. Yeah, while yeah. Everyone else is going for, sort of like that. They're just talking shit while everyone's fighting in the front. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, but, man. It's definitely started from that. And then you get the Texas teams, you know, Dallas rejoining now this year. So it's always been a rivalry between those Texas teams, Austin, Houston, Dallas. And then, um, yeah, there'll be a, there's a few more teams joining for the next season. So that'll, that'll be, so obviously it's growing a lot. And, you know, so hopefully, um, you know, have an even conference because now it's like a East and West Coast conference still thing. But for those new teams joining, it'll be even. And then they'll, We'll have more games to build those rivalries instead of traveling all the way to the West Coast to, you know, well, I guess everyone still hates LA from, from a team's point of view. Everyone wants to beat them, but. <laughs> well, but, um, well, I guess like a lot, a lot of that team did look like it's going to be a sort of one year thing anyway with a lot of those players. Oh yeah, definitely. So it'll be a bit of a pump and dump and hopefully they get, <laughs> get crushed next year and DC is chucking up the trophy, man. Um, yeah. As well, bro, you, you've been living over in the States for four years now. It's been like a pretty volatile time. So much has happened like throughout that sort of period. What, what's that sort of been like as a culture change in general from being in Australia, which like, let's be real, is pretty cruisy over here. And I mean, man, there's been just yeah. like, I don't even know where to begin all the shit that's been going over there. But has that been like a confronting thing to you or has it been like distracting to the footy at all? But I mean, like it, it must just be a lot to take in. Yeah. So when I first joined DC, um, it was a flood of COVID. So, you know, we came in, our season went for four games and then it got cut short because of COVID. So, but then I was stuck in DC the whole time because I, I couldn't go back to Australia because of the COVID situation. So, I was in DC and where I live is right next to the capital, like right, like maybe 10 minute walk from the capital yep. of, of the US. So, we had went from the protest with the Black Lives Matter movement so that was huge. That, that went, that was huge throughout the whole city. Yeah. There was like millions of people here just protesting every week, every day, just coming in, riots, stuff like that. You got, you got that, you got the COVID, people not wanting to wear a mask and like all the anti-vaxxing stuff. And then you got the, the, the Trump supporters that stormed the Capitol just the start of the year Bruh. where they just, where they honestly were, were you in, the Where were you at the time of that? I was in, I was here in my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you just, if you just hear on the news, it's, oh, there's like hundreds of people just stormed the capital with weapons. You're like, holy shit. Right. What the hell? It's chaotic, hey? I mean, this feels like, like a, because, because living in DC, like every movie has a, has a scene where you're <laughs> like, oh, I know this. I know that. So when you're hearing stuff like that on the news, you're like, oh, that's, what movie is that from? Because all this stuff is happening and it looks yeah. oh, like it's right. honestly from a movie. Next thing you're thinking, it's going to be like a fucking meteor about to hit you. Or yeah. I was like, what? What's going on? Gonna really have to call in Mark That's the cool Warburg. thing about just riding a bike around DC. Is like there's so many, you know, movie set scenes just happening around, around the city. So it's just like, oh, yeah, I've seen that before. I've seen this before. Yeah, yeah bro. That, that's cool thing. Yeah. Oh, if man, every because well, that's the thing. Like every one of the boys that I've seen that has head over there is just immediately like, oh, it's just the sickest place ever. Like I've been yeah. seeing, like I was talking to Scotty Gale and Con Foley, and they were wigging out down in Louisiana, and they just said it was brilliant. Oh, they would have loved that. They would have loved that down there. Yeah, man. And uh, have, have you been doing much traveling around the country and whatnot as well in your own time? Like, have you had a bit, a bit of free time to kind of do what you want to do? Oh yeah, last year. Um... So being my cousin Threats, he's uh, he was one of the youngest players to play for the Eagles, or one of the youngest players to play in the World Cup. Uh, I think he was seventeen in a few like a few days in the 07 World Cup. Yeah. So, so in France, yeah, so he's yeah. So he's um, I've been living with him the the past few years, and um, so we went on a road trip from from DC, 
and all the way to Sacramento on the West Coast. But we were like, fuck, we're going to do a, we're going to drive there, as well just do a whole road trip. So we hit like 33 different states along our trip, a two month road trip last year. It was, it was so cool. Oh man, like, I can we imagine. Because went, we went, went, went through the north on the way there and it came down to the south through Mexico and Texas and came all the way up through Florida and um, Carolina. So it was, it was a huge trip. Uh, all we were in just like a Volkswagen, like SUV type of car. We would just sleep on the side of the road sometimes for the first month. And then we're like, okay, we need to have a shower. So we ended up getting hotels on the way back. But <laughs> it, was, it was, a, was such a cool experience, you know, like hitting all the national parks, Yellowstone National Park is the most amazing most national park. Places like Jackson Hole is, is so cool. Like stuff you see like on magazines where it's like a, a real life place when you go to. And then like Lake Tahoe, another amazing place that is just like a, just looks like heaven. That's what the heaven would look like. Yeah. Crystal oh, clear, man. blue water. It's so yeah. sick. Yeah. So jealous, man. It's so sick where rugby can take. Yeah. And then we'll, um, yeah. we'll sort of, we'll, we'll finish up with our uh, sort of last bit here, but, uh, You've uh, got the ABs heading up uh, soon. Is that's not this weekend, but next? Yeah, next weekend. Yeah, ABs. Um, yeah, fuck the stadium. I think it's like eighty thousand people. So that'd, that'd be a pretty cool, a Obviously, pretty cool turnout. Do you reckon, do you reckon it'll probably pack out. Yeah, I think there's only a there's only a few dozen tickets left now. With, with, with what, what I've seen on on the yeah. line, so that's going to be a crazy game. That's that, that's an, another surreal experience. You know, we just watching the Huck Girl on TV ever since we were kids. And then, you know, and now you're having the opportunity to hopefully go against that in real life. So, man, that's going to be crazy. Sure, man. And I mean, so what's the sort of vibes like with the team when you're going into a game like that? Because I mean, like, obviously on paper, they're a very heavy favorite, a very favorite, uh, heavy favorite there. Do you find that like, I mean, it's sort of going into like a bit of an impossible feat and not saying that it is impossible because obviously guys can fucking do whatever but i mean like is there sort of a vibe or a game plan that you guys are setting out towards to kind of like manage that a bit better man i i, I think at the end of the day it's just the mindset has to be just enjoy the moment you know enjoy the experience going against you know one of the greatest teams in sporting history you know it's going against players that you know have to have have had years of experience you know our, our team's pretty young so it's for, for them, just to go against those guys, you just got to indulge in the moment. You got to take the moment, no matter the results, no matter win, loss, or how many points. It's just enjoying that moment, enjoying going against the ABs, and enjoying going against the Hucker, and just soaking in that you know that, that feeling of this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to go against the greatest team in the world. So make the most of it and do what you do. And that's a, that's the end of the day. That's pretty much all it is. Oh, man, yeah, it's going to be so... Uh, I'm going to be glued to the screen for that one, bro. It's going to be pretty nuts yeah, be when you're one. facing off with some yeah. of those guys that you've been watching oh, forever, bro. It's going to be yeah. outrageous. Yeah. And so just promise me one thing, you'll fucking rip some cunt's head off and I'll chuck 15 <laughs> bucks on you to score a try. So hopefully you're paying good odds. <laughs> Thousands of one, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> let's be millionaires, baby. <laughs> Brilliant, bro. Well, I'll let you go. It's fucking 12 o'clock here at night. I'll, I'll probably get off sleep, bed bro. soon. But yeah. man, no, the grind continues. Keep pumping them out. And bro, we'll um we'll check in with you as uh, the time goes on uh, over there, man. And hopefully sometime soon you're back or I'm over there and we can uh, smash a couple cold ones. Ooh, let let me be. loose in America, dude. Bring some Bundy rum over too, man. I missed that. Oh, oh. bro, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I want to drink like a yeah. Bud Light, man. Bud <laughs> Light, baby. Let's get it. Oh, bro, too easy. Well, um, man, where can everyone find you on Instagram? It's just Jammer Time on Instagram? Just Jammer Time, my man. Just Jammer Time, yeah. Oh, it's too easy. Yeah, there first. All good. If uh, Thanks for uh, checking out the After Party podcast. Uh, go check us out on Instagram at the After Party. And also uh, check us and subscribe and uh, check out some of our other ones on AFA TV.